you've got your Bibles this morning, 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, most of you all know that I started a series last week titled It's a, it's a Mixed Up World. And uh, this morning, before I'm done, you all, I will think that you have a mixed up preacher. But uh, I, 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 before I get into reading the text and, and say anything about the message, how many of you all have already seen some kind of a fireworks show this year? About a third of us. Y'all should have come up to my house last night. You could have sat on my front porch and watched them over the trees and then we'd all been good and everybody could have raised up their hands. Uh, I, I want to preach to you this morning, Lord being my helper, and I do need the Lord's help to preach this morning, as I always do, but he graciously reminded me of a passage of scripture uh, a moment ago. Uh, but I want to preach to you this morning about real fireworks. That's what I want to title the message in this mixed up world. I want to preach about real fireworks. Now, most of you all uh, probably are unaware of uh, the complexity of fireworks and how that they work. Most of you all know uh, probably that you light a fire to them. The really, really good ones will go up in the air and then when they get up there, they explode. They come apart. And it is when they come apart that you see their beauty. Ah, yes. Let me read. Maybe you all will understand why it's a mixed up world. In verse 11 of chapter 4, it said, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Now watch this. That God in all things. How many is all? All. How many is all? Over here because you all sleeping on this. You all sleeping. How many is all? Okay, now you all over here help them out. How many is all? Everybody. There you go. Now collectively, how many is all? Everybody. I get you all livened up in a minute. The scripture says here that God in all things may be glorified, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Now, before I get into the message this morning, let me tell you what that tells me is that God wants everything in our lives to glorify him through Christ. Now, I want to ask you, are you willing to be broken apart that your glory may be revealed. And let that sink down on the inside. Because if you shoot one of them fireworks up in the air and it don't go off, you know what we call that? A dud. <laughs> I don't think that you all want to be a dud. So I will ask you, are you willing to come apart for the cause of Christ? Are you willing to be broken that people might see the glory that is in you revealed by the Father? You say, preacher, you're crazy. Well, let me get to the mixed up part. Maybe you won't think that I'm so crazy. Verse 12 said, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you 
as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, watch, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding, what is exceeding joy? It is abundant, it is overflowing. The scripture here says when, when the fiery trials or when the things that come against you would come against you, it said don't, don't think that it's a strange thing, but rejoice in as much as you're partakers of Christ. Now, what's that, what's that mean, preacher? That means when trouble comes your way, be happy. You see, it's a, it's a mixed up world with a mixed up preacher when the preacher will say, when things go wrong in your life, if it is for the cause of Christ, be happy. Now, it's kind of hard. How many of y'all struggle to be happy when things not going just exactly right? Well, let me tell you what you do. You do what Bev did. She's, she's in there, and, they, and, and, and they, I cringe when I think about all the stuff that they can do, but she's in there, and they, they get ready to cut on her eye and do all of them things, and she is a little bit nervous, and she said, I, I just pressed my hands against my pocket. Mm, I believe I'll just preach right there. You know what you ought to do? You ought to put a little bit of the Lord in your pocket. And maybe that's why them old-fashioned preachers get a hold of their pant leg when they're preaching like that because they got a little bit of the Lord in their pocket. You say, preacher, what is, well, I got to tell you what, you know what, you, you need to do like David did when he wrenched down in the brook and he got them, fine. he had a little bit of the Lord in his pocket so that when trouble comes, it is don't worry, you can still rejoice in that this is not all that there is. Are you willing to come apart for the cause of Christ? He said, not only don't think it's strange, because I got to tell you what, somebody was saying to me, they say, preacher, why do you think that I am going through everything that I'm going through? Any of y'all ever been through anything you didn't understand? Any of you going through something right now that you don't understand? Any of you all pray and pray and pray and it seems like it still comes and it still comes and it still comes. And the scripture said here that when these things come our way, when the world comes against the church, the Bible tells us, don't think it's strange, but understand that Jesus said that because the world hates me, if you choose, listen, I might as well just be plain. If you choose to follow Christ, and I'd, and listen, I don't mean to follow him on the outskirts, but I'm talking about getting right down in the middle where the rubber meets the road. When you get there, you can understand that the world is not gonna like you. You can understand that the world is gonna have an issue, but I'm gonna tell you what. The scripture said, be of good cheer because I have overcome this this world. Thank you, Brother Gene. Amen. I asked Gene to pray for me because I figured I was going to struggle to preach this morning and I seen him over there and he's talking to the Lord and I'm feeling like preaching so he'll keep praying. I'll keep preaching. You all want me to be done? Tell Gene to be still. <laughs> Look at what he says. He said, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's odd. But brother, when listen, so, so what are you saying, preacher? That saying, tell the trouble. If it's because of my stand for Christ, that trouble will come this way. Then come on, trouble. Because I'm going to rejoice. Why is it, preacher? Because if I stand, man, oh man, oh man. Fellas, you ought to get ready to be on your feet because I read over in the book when Peter stood up and he began to preach a gospel that he knew that they was not gonna like. 
the Bible said that the other 11 began to stand with him. Listen, I've got to tell you what. I don't know what's coming down the road, but I can tell you this. There's going to be some that are going to stand on an uncompromised gospel that says this is the way. Walk in it and listen. Come what may, I'm going to rejoice. Listen, I got to think about something else. If the devil's not bothering you, it might be because you're not doing nothing. But if you listen, you say, preacher, you got no Bible. I might have a little bit. The Bible said that whenever we try to do good, that evil is always present trying to tear it down. But bless God, man, oh man. thank you, Brother Gene. You just keep praying. I'm glad that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, for the ability which you give me. Got a lot going on in my head. And the devil said, how are you going to preach? I'm going to preach as the ability that God gives me. And I'm grateful this morning that the devil took issue and he took notice of the church. Because if the devil ain't noticing the church, then the church ain't doing nothing either. But if the devil has got an issue with the church, then bless God, the church must be doing what God would listen. I've got to tell you what this morning, I'm going to rejoice that I am made a part Take her. Inasmuch as you are our partaker of the sufferings of Christ, that when his glory shall be revealed. I, I've often read that. In fact, I did a while ago. And I was thinking, well, you know, that's when the Lord comes back. That's when his glory is gonna be revealed. But may I tell you, I believe that his glory is revealed sometimes on this side. And you say, preacher, how do you know that? Because I've seen it. You say, how have you seen it? When I've seen a child of God that have been beat down about as low as they can go, and maybe they get out of their pew and they come up to the altar and they bow down before God and they say, Father, I'm beat down about as low as I can go. And the hand of God reaches down and said, let me, whoo, man, I'm telling you now, I feel like preaching. I feel like Moses did when the hand of God covered up Moses, when Moses said, God, would you show me, show me God your glory. And God covered him up a little bit and he allowed to see just a little glimpse. I'm telling you, I can see this morning just a little glimpse of the glory of my father being revealed in the church. Whew. To our visitors, I am so glad that you are here. Mm. but rejoice. I believe I'll just park there. In as much as that I get to participate, that's what that word means, by the way, I get to participate of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, it says you're gonna be glad also with exceeding joy. What is that? That's happy enough that when you get happy, if Kate was here this morning, she would tell you to tell your face that you understand. How many of y'all understand that this is not the end of the story? So tell your face. He says that we will be glad with an exceeding joy if you be reproached for the name of Christ. Now, now listen, I want you to get this, so I might as well stop and pass her just a minute. If you did something, and it's not because of the name of Christ, but if you did something and reproach comes on you or you feel bad, you know, quit being a dummy. 
But if you're listening for the Lord and you're living for him and folks are reproaching you or casting you aside, it says, happy are you? I told you it's a mixed up world. How in the world, preacher, can you be happy if nobody likes you? I'm telling you, there may be some that don't like me, but I've got some great news. I've got one that's greater than all of them that loved me enough that he left. Woo, man, I'm telling you, I feel like I've got pulpit wheel travel this morning. I've got one that was willing to love me when nobody else would love me. He looked at me when I was unlovable and he said, I will die for you. I've got to tell you what, I've got one. He outvotes everybody else. And this morning, he loves me above measure. Wow. Happy. (laughs) Why are you happy, preacher? I'm glad you asked. It says so right in the verse. For the spirit of glory. What in the world is the spirit of glory? Yeah, y'all ever look at anybody... I know I've told this story, but I, I'm telling it again because I like it and it fits. I went down with Brother Lucian one time down to the hospital. OSU, I believe it was. And there was a young woman down there about 25 years old. The doctors had told her she had cancer and she wasn't going to survive. Somebody had called us and asked us, would we go down there? And as we walked down the hospital corridor, neither one of us said a word because both of us was dreading going in that hospital room. A 25-year-old young woman don't know what we're gonna say to her. How do you go in there and tell her how good God is? But I'm telling you, as God is my witness, as we walked around her doorway in there, she said, oh, preacher, I am so glad that you are here because I wanna tell you about how good that my God is. Oh, man, you know what that is? That is the spirit of glory that rests on that young woman. We came out of that hospital ready to take on hell because she had lifted up our spirit by the spirit that was in her. I think the church, if we're being persecuted, if folks are talking about the church, if folks are not happy with the church, I believe there ought to be a spirit of glory in the church and of God. Now look at this. Y'all about ready. Y'all get your shout ready. Some of you all say, preacher, I am not gonna shout. What in the world would everybody think about me if I shouted? I just preach to you, it don't matter what anybody thinks about you. Well, why in the world would I be gonna gonna shout, preacher? Because it says the spirit of glory and of God, that'd be the spirit of God. Now watch this, it resteth or is resting upon you. Who's you? Do you know that God cares enough about what you're facing today and will face tomorrow that his spirit is resting upon you? Mm. Oh, I got to get back to the fireworks, don't I? Watch. It says on their part, he that be God is evil spoken of, but on your part or on my part or on the church's part, he is glorified. You know what that is? When the, when the devil tries to tear you apart, as you're coming apart, you ought to be praising Jesus. So somebody, somebody told me last week, I, I, I'm not gonna embarrass anybody, but somebody told me last week, they said, preacher, God must have told you I was gonna be here today. I said, well, that's great. I said, why is that? They said, because you have no idea 
what I've been going through for the last little bit and God has brought, you know what that is? That's the devil trying to take somebody apart but every time the devil gets a hold of a little part, he's got to get a hold of the glory of God. You know, if the devil tries to get a hold of your tongue this morning, That preacher didn't just say that out loud. Yeah, he might have. I figure I might as well just make it plain. If the devil, if the devil tries to put into your mind and into your mouth something that you ought not say, what you ought to do is you ought to open up your mouth and about the time that the devil thinks he's got you down to where you're gonna say something bad, you open up your mouth and you say glory to God anyway. Whoo, that felt good coming out. Wow. Mm. But on my part, the scripture said here that he is glorified. Verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. How many of you gave God glory this week because you suffered? Oh, man, I... I don't like this kind of preaching, neither does the devil. But I'm loving you anyway. Amen, preacher, we loving you too. Listen, first Peter, now I'll move on, but I, I still want to talk to you about real fireworks. Real fireworks. They can't see the glory of God in your life until you are willing to be taken apart that his glory might be revealed. Now watch verse five of chapter one of 1 Peter. Now let me read verse four, verse four. Nope, let me go to verse three. Y'all can read one and two later. Verse three said, blessed be the God and Father of our whose Lord is he. Oh, no, no, no. I will slow down. It's not a trick question. If you're here this morning and you're saved, whose Lord is he? All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, let me stop right there and tell you what that says. I'm putting it in hillbilly terms so you all can understand it. What it says here is, God's got a place in glory, and if you're saved, you get to go. That's all that says. That's simple. He's got a place in glory. He said, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, there you may be also. And if I go away, I will come again to receive you unto myself. Now watch, verse six, I'm gonna go back to the fireworks. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. How many of you all for a season are willing to be broken by God? Be careful, don't raise your hand. Are you willing to be broken by God? Because it says here, you greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold or multiple times of temptation or testing that the trial or testing of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried with... Mm. The testing. Have you ever thought that maybe that what you go through instead of thinking, because you know the devil's going to say you've done something wrong. Maybe you've done something right. 
Maybe the time of your trial, the time of your testing is not because you did something wrong, but it might be that you are living for God and when you're living for God, he allows those tests to come. Why? Now I know you, all, you, you guys don't never question God, right? Everybody that's never questioned God, raise your hand. Oh wait, look around you. All of you that have questioned God, raise your hand. <laughs> Watch. He says here that, that our faith is going to be tested. It's more precious than gold. And though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What in the world are you saying, preacher? I'm saying when we go through times of trouble. <laughs> this, by the way, is not in my notes. It's free, don't cost you nothing. Do you know one of the other things that I just thought about? That when the fireworks is going off, there's an awful lot of noise. You, you know what I, I want people to hear in the life of a Christian? I want them to hear an awful lot of noise. You, you say, well, preacher, what is that noise that I'm hearing? It is the exploding or the coming apart of the firework. So you know, you know what we need them to hear? We, we need them to hear some that when they come apart, when, and I gotta tell you what, when you come apart, I have gotta believe that coming apart sometimes when, when part of us is being taken apart, when God is fashioning us, when the devil is testing us, when the trouble is pressing on us, sometimes coming apart, I gotta believe it hurts. But I believe sometimes even in the midst of that, while it hurts, we ought to be praising God. I, I, and I told you, we're living in a mixed up world because when the preacher tells you, if, if everything around me is coming apart, preacher, how in the world am I supposed to be happy and praise God? Because the Bible said there that when his glory comes, when he appears, when he comes back, no matter what this world has brought our way, no matter what the world has done to you, if you endure to the end, the Bible said the same shall be you know what? The devil wants to tell you this morning you can't make it. <laughs> you, you might as well just quit. Might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel, give up on God, throw in your Bible and live like hell because it does not matter. But I say to you today, endure, hold on. When the trouble comes, reveal God's glory in your life and soon now, Jesus will come for you. You see, if I didn't believe that this morning, we would be of men most miserable. We would be in trouble. It says that it might be found unto the praise of honor and glory. How many of you all went, you know, cause I listen. They, they said, uh, Pat was talking. She got a message from Bill. They had fireworks right out their back door and they, they, they had an amphitheater back there and they was listening. They said, except for Andrew, Andrew was sitting there, had the dog on his lap and Andrew had both ears covered up like this. And, but he was watching but he had his ears covered up so that he couldn't hear. And you say, well, preacher, what in the world has that got to do with anything? Because sometimes, sometimes we want to see, we want to see the splendor of God, but we don't want it to affect us. We, we want the preacher to preach us happy. Well, I got news. The preacher cannot preach you happy unless you listen to what he says. Emily came in this morning and Emily was already happy in God. No matter what was going on, she'd been praying for a young man. She called me the other day and she said, preacher, will you pray for Stephen? I said, sure. She said, I believe God's dealing with him. And you say, preacher, what is that? Because I got to tell you, sometimes the devil wants Emily to be still. 
Emily's laughing because she's saying in her mind, she's saying, yeah, sometimes a preacher wants me to be still. <laughs> you say, well, preacher, I got to tell you what. The devil's been trying to get her to be still for a long time. And for as long as I have known her, she has refused to shut up. She has refused to quit talking about God. She has refused that no matter what trouble came her way, even in the midst of the trouble, she says, I'm still going to stand up and give God glory for what God is doing. We want to see God's glory revealed, but we don't want it to impact us. You know, if you want God's glory revealed in your life, you're going to have to be willing to suffer. You say, well, preacher, I, I, I don't want to suffer. I don't want to suffer either. But I got to tell you what, if you suffer well, the scripture says that it's going to be found under the praise, the honor, and the glory at the appearing of Christ. You know what that means? I, I mean... How many of you are waiting on the rapture? <laughs> you know, I never have figured out yet why when a preacher talks about the rapture or when he gets to preaching on the rapture, uh, Christian people get nervous. <laughs> you, you all, any of y'all get nervous when, when they start talking about the rapture going to happen soon? I, I got to tell you what. In Christian circles, people get nervous when you start talking about the rapture. We, be, we believe that it's going to happen, just not today, preacher. Who told you that? The Bible said that at an hour that you think not, the Son of Man is going to return. He coming back. Well, so what, what does it mean, preacher? That, that means when we are living for God, it says here that we at the time of his, I got to tell you what, when the rapture happens, I don't know what you all going to do. When the rapture happens, I'm going to shout. And now I told you all I was going to think that you had a, a, a mixed up preacher, but you might at least think you got a weird preacher. I know that the Bible says that it's going to happen in a moment and the twinkling of an eye. As the lightning flashes from the east to the west, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. But in the scheme of time, when the rapture happens, I, I, just, I just wonder whether or not that God will pause the church in midair just for a moment so we can look back and say, I told you that this is not all there is. <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel good. I, 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 gotta, I just got to believe that at that particular, when the rapture of the church happens and the Lord's glory is revealed and the church is changed, I've just got to believe that the devil will understand that there was some that he was just not able to stop. Amen. You say, well, preacher, have you got any Bible for that? Mm -hmm. It's in Thessalonians. When you get home, you can read it. Look, in verse 8, it says, Whom having not seen you love, and in whom, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy. And you all got this part down pat. <laughs> with joy unspeakable. Are so happy, preacher. I just can't talk about it. <laughs> That's not what that means. What that means is that you are so overwhelmed with the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God that you just cannot find the words to express it. Joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. What in the world does that mean, preacher? That means when the fire comes, 
when the difficulties come, when the times of testing comes, that they ought to see something in the child of God that would cause them to understand that we, and, and let, me, let me just, and we've been, on Wednesday nights, we've been in a, a really, and it has turned out to be a really, really quality series, quality study on the promises of God. But you know, I'm just one of them hillbilly preachers. I just believe it. I, I, I mean, nobody's got to convince me that it's real. When I got saved, he changed my heart and he changed my life. Gave me a new name, a new home, a new speech, a new way. And I just simple enough, I believe it. I believe it's real. Don't believe that this is all that there is. What are you saying, preacher? Well, I believe he's coming back for those that are prepared for him. And the scripture said it is receiving or I will receive no matter what the world brings against me here. I will receive an end of my faith, even the salvation of my soul. I want to read one more thing, then I'll quit. Verse 13. He said, because of these things, or wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you, at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. Real fireworks. When fire comes and the fireworks come apart, it is then that their glory is revealed. When our times of testing comes, church, it is in the midst of that that the glory of God must be revealed in our lives that others might see. And you know what I want them to do? Brother Kyle, if you'd come to the piano. I go to the fireworks. And I listen to the children. When they see what they say, what they see, and then they begin to say, oh, my. Oh, man, I, I like that one. Ah, wow. Did you see? And just almost before they can get the wow out, another one comes. I hate them pauses in fireworks shows. I like them when they're one right after another. You say, well, preacher, what's that got to do with us? Because when it's all said and done and done and said, let me tell you what's going to happen. In the fireworks show, they call it the grand finale. It's when they all come apart at one time. And the sky is filled with the beauty and splendor. May I tell you that one day soon now I believe filled with the beauty and the splendor. We shall not hinder them which sleep in the Lord. Graves are going to split open. The church is going to rise. And in a moment in the twinkling of an eye the Bible said we shall be changed. This corruptible is going to come apart. And the incorruptible that's down on the inside, that glory is going to be revealed. And the sky will be filled with the splendor and all of the beauty of God's people. show that'll be. I, I am glad that I get to be a part of what God is doing on this side. He's a great God indeed. If 
I could get for a moment every head bowed and nobody looking around in reverence to the Lord. I wonder 